sometimes I find it so hard to explain to the extroverts in my life what it feels like to be an introvert. And there are so many things that I wish the extroverts in my life would know about me as an introvert. Sometimes when you're in the moment, you can't always think of the right words. You don't necessarily know how to describe the way that you're feeling. So, so in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the 10 things introverts want you to know. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to welcome those of you who are new to my channel. My name is Bridget. On this channel, you'll find me talk a lot about introvert things, a lot about social anxiety and general anxiety. So if any of that interests you, make sure you go check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful or useful. Comment below what you'd like to see more from me and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. So in no particular order, I'm going to start with number one. I would prefer to have one or two deep conversations with a person rather than spending that time having chit chat with 25 different people. When I'm at a social gathering, I will almost always do this. I'll flock to one, maybe two people and spend 30 minutes to an hour, depending, having a real conversation with them about something that maybe we're both mutually interested in. Rather than spending that time frolicking around the social event and having that small talk with you know, a bunch of the people that are at the event. That to me sounds not only boring and draining and all the things that I hate, but I, I, if I'm gonna have a conversation with somebody, I wanna talk about things that I'm interested in. Why would I wanna talk about something mindless? I mean, some people prefer that. I'm just not that person. Number two, not wanting to hang out with you is not personal. It's not an attack on you. I just need more time to rest and recover. And it's not because I'm lazy. After being at a social gathering, I might not hang out with people for days. That's normal for me. But it's very hard to explain to people in my life, especially the extroverts, because I'm, I'm seemingly always surrounded by them, that, sorry, I can't go to things three days in a row, or sometimes even two days in a row, especially if that one was exhausting and it was all day. It's nothing on you. It's about me. Number three is my favorite. I really, really resonate with this. We are not social butterflies. We take a long time to open up. But when we do open up, we may become that butterfly. We may not. Depends if we have a connection or not. I am definitely that person that you might meet me one or two times, maybe even three times, depending on the situation, especially if it's with a lot of people. I might not talk at all. I might talk here and there. I might seem as that quiet, shy, weird girl. I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking. But on that fourth time, that fifth time, whatever the case is, I might be speaking nonstop to you. Right, so it really just depends upon the person and the situation, how long it will take me to open up. Number four, canceling plans less than 24 hours in advance is nothing personal on you. It's about my self-care. And I honestly really hate to do this to people, but sometimes if I've had a rough day or if I'm not you know, feeling it this week, I might be that person who cancels on you less than 24 hours in advance. And just know it's nothing on you. It has everything to do with me. And I know that's like cliche things. Not you, it's me, but really it is. Trust me when I say you would definitely not want me there at this low that I'm at right now where I really don't want to socialize. You don't want me to be there. Sometimes I just have to do it. Number five, this one is just, I hate it. When you mention how quiet I am or the fact that I'm not talking when we're at an event or a social gathering, it just makes me more self-conscious and make, makes me want to retreat back into myself. So don't do that. Don't be that guy who mentions the obvious. It's obvious that I'm quiet right now. It's obvious that I'm not talking. Don't, don't say it. Six, and this is pretty much just as obvious as the last one. We're not antisocial and we're not stuck up. We just take longer to recover and rest after having that social gathering. It's really easy to judge someone right off the bat and you may think you know what's going on, but you probably don't. Always assume that you don't know. That is probably the best advice I've ever gotten in my life. Always assume you don't know things. It's better to not say anything or ask questions about something than to just assume something about somebody. Seven, another one of my favorites. My silence in conversations is not aloofness or indifference or a lack of personality. I would just rather get to know you one-on-one -on -one before I start inserting my opinions or feelings on a particular topic. And this is in regards to like, if we're in a group setting and maybe I don't know everyone there. And if I'm quiet, it's probably because I'm not gonna insert my opinion if I don't know you or if I don't feel like I have anything to add to the conversation. Number eight, another good one. I'm not loud and I don't 
always insert my feelings into the conversation. And it's not because I don't have those feelings. It's not because I lack empathy. It's because actually the opposite. I feel too deeply. So if I'm going to open up that can of worms, I'm going to want to make sure that it's in the right place and these people take it the right way. Number nine, it's kind of similar to one of the ones I just mentioned. The reason that I may be quiet or I'm not talking is because I feel like I don't have anything beneficial to add to the conversation. And to be honest, I'm okay with that silence. I live in silence majority of the time, so I'm comfortable with that. Sounds like you're the one that's uncomfortable with silence. Number 10 is by far my favorite and I really wish everyone knew this about introverts. We may act extroverted. We might be extroverted a good portion of the time, but that's a survival skill that we have adopted because of living in this extroverted world. But along with that, it still exhausts us and drain us exponentially to act in an extroverted way. So just keep that in mind if you are an extrovert watching this video. And there are so many more things that I could have mentioned in this video, but I don't want to make it like an hour long video. I want to keep it short and sweet and straight to the point. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope it was useful and helpful as always, and I will see you next time.